John Maselli survived 13 bombing raids over Nazi-occupied territory, which helped win the war on the European front. But without a doubt, his biggest accomplishment was winning Mary's heart and raising the beautiful family that followed. This is the story of John's greatest mission, meeting and marrying Mary Duffy. The rumor was that we had to go to 29th school and right. then Japan. Well, I just loved to travel, so I didn't let that okay. thing. I thought it would be a great trip. Still expecting to head back into combat, John had no idea that the war with Japan was about to end abruptly, which would launch John into an even bigger adventure. Well, we had a 30-day delay en route because we were going to go to 29th school. So about the third week of my 30-day uh, delay en route, I met Mary at a dance hall. I went to this dance hall this night, and then she happened to go there too alone. So we met and we had some nice dancing. You said we, this was the third week? This is, yeah, the, the, it was about the last day of my, my uh, leave, though. So uh, then... Uh, you met this, Mary? I left, for, I left for Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and she went to Wapak, I guess, because she had told her mother she was coming up. So then we wrote letters for a few weeks. Then, in a matter of days, the bombs were dropped, Japan surrendered, and peace was finally fully declared. Once they dropped the bomb, I was still in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, waiting to go to 29th school. And boy, we had, that was such a party in that, from what we heard, the, the tavern ran out of beer at 7 o'clock. So people were out in the streets, all over the streets. And, and, and they were jammed. I mean, you couldn't get a car driving down the street. There were just people. And then they're handing you a bottle. You know, this could have been rum, this could have been whiskey. Sure. And that's when I got so sick. The war was over. But what about John's time in the military? The war in, in uh, Japan ended because we dropped a bomb a couple of times. And uh, uh, then... Uh, that thing was called off, but they didn't cancel our trip or anything. So we still boarded a train and went down to Fort Myer, Florida for 29th school, which never got started. We just laid there. And a lot of the guys got discharged if they had the points. And then they uh, figured out that I had enough points. and. It really wasn't true, but they had counted uh, some of the uh, missions the, the uh, outfit was on, and I got credit for the mission, so that's how I got more points. Okay, we'll go with your math. But with no transportation and about the same amount of money, what next? And then me and another guy were given bus tickets to go to Fort Sheridan, and then we were going to be released from there. Well, uh, we took the bus, I remember, to Memphis, like, and that's where I had this incident where I was sitting in back of the bus, and they kept telling me, go up front, you're not supposed to sit in the back. Blacks sit in the back. And I finally, after about the third try, the motorman stopped the bus, came back and got me and brought me up to the front of the wow. bus. He said, you can't sit back there. I said, I like to sit back here. Didn't make any difference. So then we proceeded and we got up to, up to the Chicago area. So in the Chicago area, I was gonna go home and sleep in my bed. And this guy with that and I was escorting. He was under me for some, didn't have the, the rank I had. So I was escorting him. I told him, I don't care how you do it. I said, just get to Fort Jordan next day, you know. He said, okay. So he did. So I didn't have any trouble from that. And I just went home and visited with the folks that night. And I went up there myself the next day. Now that John was home, he was glad to utilize the GI Bill and even happier to spend time with Mary. On a shoestring budget, of course. So it was more than a year that we were dating after that. Hmm. And, uh, but we just went to movies 
and we'd go swimming together. Mm -hmm. We'd go to parks or something like that. Uh, the uh, oh, field museum and things. Sure. Uh, or the theater. We'd go to a show now and then. We'd go to a dance now and then. That's all. So, and I didn't have wheels because uh, that car they took back, I was going to have it authorized, uh, overhauled. So that, after that, I didn't have any money to buy anything. So I was going to uh, DePaul University, though. And Mary was working at a bank, or at a law office, McDermott, Will, and Emery. Mm. And I'd meet her at lunchtime, and I'd take her to lunch. And then uh, I'd go back to school, if, or else if I was done with classes for that day, I'd just go home. Their coursework complete, their courtship continued albeit awkwardly at times. After that, um, I was looking for a job, Mary was working, and I don't know, we just uh, just went out, and uh, yeah, we'd get home before her sister sometime, and we'd have the couch, and, and if her sister got home with Jack, she was going with Jack then, her husband, and if they got the couch, we'd go in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> so. And the one time I was, I come to get Mary, and I don't know, oh, this was after a date. We were in the front door well, and for some reason or other, we were kissing in the door well, and, and, and somehow something got on the door bell, and I'm ringing the bell, and I didn't even know it, and here I'm kissing her. Finally, the mother comes to the door, and she says, well, would you get off the bell? <laughs> that was so funny. Uh, <laughs> I was so embarrassed, oh, of sure, course. Sure. <laughs> Finally, it was time to take their relationship to the next step. But not every member of the family was necessarily on board. I was at Mary's at Christmas time, and I had gotten a $75 bonus from the state of Illinois mm. for being a soldier. Mm. And they gave it according to the amount of time you spent in service, I think, because I only got 75 bucks. <coughs> but I bought a ring, and I gave it to Mary for Christmas, and that's where I got bit by her dog. And uh, But we did have a good session there that Christmas, because these friends that we told you about, Mr. Stark and and Bernard Schechter and her dad and and uh, the, Kil the Kilroys, and we sat around and had some good singing session, which I love to do. And you know, your dad is great for that. Yeah, he, just, yeah. he just loves to have those meetings, I know. I'd love to, if they were closer, I'd go to them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I like that. Really enjoy that. Well, was, wait, was that was that an engagement ring, or was that just a... Yeah, it was an engagement ring. Oh, okay. $75 one, big so, deal. Oh, okay. I didn't have any money. Oh, at the time. And I spent it on that, yeah. And I wasn't working, I was getting a 5220. You know, you got 20 bucks a week for 52 weeks. Mm. They give you a little time to get a job or to get settled. At the Christmas celebration, did you, you proposed or you just gave her the ring or how did that work? I, yeah, I don't know if we set a date. I think we just... Agreed that you wanted. Agreed to be, yeah, that we're going steady, I guess. Because uh, I don't remember setting a date, but later on Mary said, well, what what's going to go on? So then... We got together and we set a date for August 16th of the next year, I think it was. 16th? 1940. 47 it was, wasn't it? Yeah. So the date was set, but who would tie the knot? And then it just started, then we got married in August 16th, and uh, my brother was and my sister were both in the wedding group, and my mother and father were there. We got married at St. Ed's, and the priest that married us was Father Vincent, who was a cousin. Neither the wedding or the honeymoon were perfect, but John and Mary were a perfect match. The day of the wedding, uh, I don't think we had a practice. Anyways, hmm. he was supposed to be there, it was like a 10 o'clock mass, and he got kind of lost because he hadn't been to the church before. And his brothers came and his father and mother, I guess. 
So that was kind of funny because we were a little late getting going. Mm. And uh, yeah, then we got married. And her mother had this cottage up in Wisconsin, the, the right. brick house, the oh, stone yeah. house. Yeah. Yeah, you remember that. Well, uh, she gave it to us for the honeymoon, mm. see, for a week or so. Well, at the same time, she had promised some soldier that he could use it. So we get up there, and here's this other guy using it. So after a couple of days of strained relations, like, and yet they were nice people, sure. he moved out somewhere, or else we did, and uh, finished it off. The 65 years that followed were also not perfect. But the joyous moments far outweighed the tears, and despite hardships along the way, together they raised 11 children, 23 grandchildren, and a rapidly expanding field of great-grandchildren on a foundation of love and respect. The fact that this growing group is made up of thoughtful, compassionate people who, despite having their differences, remains one giant, loving, and supportive family is proof that John's greatest mission was also his greatest success.